my friend. This is for you. This was your granddad's. Well, yeah, I know, but... Well, there isn't anybody he'd rather see have it. Got yourself a flintlock. Johnny just gave me this. Yeah, he gave me this, his old railroad watch from the Santa Fe. What's eating here? Well, he wouldn't part with these things, unless he was dying. I think that's what he thinks he's going to do. He saw some woman the other day. She read his palms, said he was suffering from a truncated lifeline. Oh, come on, you don't believe in that? Look at him. Like he's got one foot in the grave. Who's this crystal gazer you've been talking to? Not any crystal gazer. She's a real fine lady. Sure. Well, she's European, Spanish, or something like that. Name of Anna Burrell. Yeah, she just took that old place east of town. Oh, yeah, she's a real fine, sympathetic lady with visionary powers. How much she get out of you? Oh, nothing. No, she wouldn't take a red cent. Well, that's believable. Having to tell you a story like that. Did she say it was going to happen? I mean, you're going to get shot or trampled to death? What? Oh, she didn't exactly put the nail in the barrel head, but... Well, I, I can show you. Show me your uh, lifelines. Well, well, come on, let me see your hand. Because you, it, she read the lifeline. You Look at your lifeline there, and you'll see. Look at that, see? You both got nice, long lifelines. Look at that. It's cut off more than halfway. You can see, I should have died in my early 30s. I'm living on borrowed time. Oh, Jelly, can't you see you're gonna make yourself sick taking nonsense like that seriously? So, Lancer, we come on a dead steer up by South Mesa. Looks to be poison. A dead steer? She told me about that. She said she saw a white face with horns. Now, if that isn't a Hereford, my name isn't Jellifer Hoskins. You got a water sample? First thing I did. Thank you, Charlie. As you say, sir. I'll have this analyzed in town. I'll ride in with you. Well, Jelly, you want to go in with us? Come on, I'm buying. Picture an ice cold flagon of lager, a couple hard boiled eggs. No, Johnny, I'd rather just sit and watch the sun go down. Okay. Does look kind of funny. I know some people are more sensitive to suggestion than other people. I think I'll go by and see that woman. What was her name? Anna Burrell.
anybody home? has come loose. I haven't had the time or the money to have it repaired. Now go away. Are you Anna Burrell? Yes, I am. And precisely who are you? Johnny Lancer. I've never heard of you. No, ma'am. Uh, I came to talk to you about a friend of mine. Jolly Hoskins. You told his fortune. You said he was going to die. The gentleman I encountered on the street. He's your friend? Yes. He's, uh, he works at our ranch. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Lancer. There's nothing I can do for him. Well, Jelly, my friend, is a pretty impressionable guy, and, uh, well, I'd like you to come out there and untell his fortune. I won't give you any money for it, but I'll give you a hand with that axe. You mean sort of cross my palm with firewood? Something like that. Well, I'm afraid it's not that simple. There are some things that are foreordained. But I couldn't lie about what I see. I'm sorry. Is it also foreordained that I am going to help you with your firewood? No. But you will. I hope to eventually establish myself in San Francisco. By telling fortunes? You know, Mr. Lancer, this is a very puzzling gift. Sometimes I can see much in people. Sometimes nothing at all. What do you see when you look at me? I see a man coming from another world with another name. It's almost as though there were two of you. Well, that's pretty good. What else? I see a dark cloud hovering over the land. A pestilence? I don't know. But this cloud does not bode well for your house, Mr. Lancer. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I feel compelled. I see the mask of death again. I see the face of a man lying on the ground near water. And his eyes are dead in the moonlight. Are you saying that man on the ground is, uh, Jelly? No. The man I see is the head of a house. A house that is cursed. And you also have a gambling instinct. Stock market? As a family man, yes, but uh, personally, not much. Well, stay with things you understand. Grains, beef. Uh, strange. How would I see railroad ties? I don't know. I see smoke. And now burning. Johnny, stay away from railroad tracks. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't believe any of this stuff, but uh, I do like the way you say it. Howdy. Hi. 
must have been worth talking to. Yeah, she was. I didn't expect to find you up. Did you find anything? Is the water bad? Oh, no, the water turned out to be pure as the ponds of paradise. What worries me is six steers died this afternoon. Same thing? Mm -hmm. Poison. Lancer could be in trouble. Yeah, word does spread, does he? The price of beef is already down. If this gets out of hand, we'll either have to sell or destroy the herd. I don't mind telling you, we can't afford a blow like that now. How's Jolly? No change. He still won't eat anything. Hello, Charlie. How are you, Johnny? What's up? Well, I figured someone ought to come down and tell you. Mr. Lancer, we got uh, six more dead ones. Same thing? Yeah. Yeah, from the high grass to clean down to the south boundary. It just don't make much sense. Suddenly, like a, like a plague on us. A couple of the boys got a bad taste in their mouth. Seen us how jelly and all. Now, Charlie, you tell them there is no plague on Lancer. There'll be a vet there tomorrow. And I thank you for writing in. No bother. Good night, sir. Good night, Charlie. Angus McGovern will be here tomorrow. He's always good to bank on in a pinch. Good. Meanwhile, we'll find that poison. Could be that water hole we scooped out last summer. Wouldn't be at all surprised. I'll have him check on it. I had the miseries the last couple of days. Well, do me a favor and drink the buttermilk. Do you good? No, I couldn't. Jelly, a man can think himself sick. There's a curse on this place, Johnny. Well, that's crazy talk. Maybe to you, not to me. You know, there's some people, like that Hannah Burrell, they got a sixth sense. There's a dark cloud hanging over man and animal alike. I got what the cattle got. I'll leave this for you, just in case you change your mind. Thank you. See you in the morning, huh? Good to see you, Angus. Hey, you're just in time for breakfast. As usual, I planned it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, these flapjacks take me back to old Virginia. They were good days. Another statuary, sir. The reason we ask you here, Angus, is that we find ourselves in a temporary bind. Most everyone is just now. You see, we have to sell off some mineral and mining to cover commodities, and you know the market better than we do, so... I'd hate to see you unload anything just now. You'd take a real drubbing. Would you be willing to sell our joint holdings in Nevada Silver? Murdoch, that's got to go up. Naturally, I'd go along with you, but... Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll put it before the bank board tomorrow, and we'll see. If you're really in that tight of a squeeze, uh, maybe it's my chance. Here we go again. 
I'll give you twice again what the spread's worth, Murdoch. Well, as honest men, Angus, we may as well admit that we're having a little trouble with our beef. Oh, I don't give a hoot about the cattle end. These are really delicious, Teresa. Thank you very much. I've always been excited by your high country. You know, the ore, and there's a fortune in your timber alone. <laughs> I know, you turned Lancer into another Virginia city. With the railhead running right through this kitchen. You can bet your last dollar I would. Now, look, this is a serious offer, men. Sorry, sorry, Angus. I'll save that kind of progress, if it is progress, for my grandchildren. Better yet, your great-grandchildren. <laughs> You're fools, you know. You're all fools. Getting back to the market, Murdoch. I've got an inside tip for you. If you're holding any Eastern Railroad stock, unload it now, today. A stock scandal's going to explode on Monday. And if you're holding any paper, set fire to it and watch it burn. Now, why would I see railroad ties? They're burning. Keep away from railroad tracks, Johnny. Mr. McGovern? Anybody else could have heard about this in town or anything? Oh, it's impossible, Johnny. It's absolutely confidential. Died. Place he looks sick. Turning blue, that's a sure sign. That's cyanide. It's one of the salts. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours or maybe a couple of minutes, just depending on the shape of the animal. Cyanide. Well, it's a lot different than pestilence. Well, I wouldn't feel too relieved about it, Johnny. This stuff can grow wild in a, in a hundred different plants around. Like bark of wild cherry, or prune pits, or peach pits, or apricot pits, anything. We don't feed our cattle fruit. Uh, you'd be surprised what they chew behind your back. Just to clean their teeth. You know those rains we had last winter? I think that's raised the water table. That could affect your graze around here. And if that's the case, why, you could be years finding the source. What do you think we ought to do? Well, I'd ride your herd off here as soon as it could. Or sell out. I'd tell you something else I'd do. In the meantime, I'd stop chewing on grass. Just a half a teaspoon of that stuff will kill a horse. I'm getting out of here before the rest of you get what I got. But you don't have an infection. He said so. Now, now please get down, Jelly. Tell everybody I love him, honey. Jelly! Please. Jelly! Doing what I ought, Johnny. 
You know you ought to be thrashed? Johnny, why don't you come in? I want you to come out and talk to Jelly. I told you. I know what you told me. He's worse. I'm afraid to go to your place. Well, now, that doesn't make sense. I mean, you've never seen it. I don't have to. You know, telling him what you told him is the same as killing him? You know that, don't you? That's unkind. It's true. I did not tell him he was going to die. I said someone was going to die. Look, you're quibbling. Now, he took it to mean himself. Now, come on, I'll bring you right back. Look, Anna, we got enough trouble without losing Jelly. Now, we got steers dying on us. We got men leaving. Steers? Since when? The last couple days. The cloud. No, it's not that pestilence. It's cyanide. It's a lot different from pestilence. Is it? This isn't what I saw. It's so lovely. I saw something else, something dead and deserted, a more, a more desolate place, with wind howling over empty land. I'm so pleased to be so contradicted. You have a lovely place, Johnny. Thank you. We like it. Don't try to cushion what's coming for me, ma'am. You saw it crystal clear, and I'm resigned. Um, I believe I mistook you for someone else. It don't become you to lie, ma'am. Don't fret about me. Why, learning about it in advance has given me time to adjust and accept. I'm grateful you put me to peace. Jelly, look, will you stop talking and just listen? I have foreseen wrong far more often than right. I think I feel another wave of that dizzy tiredness coming.
enjoy standing in the dark? I was preparing to leave in the event that you invited the young man in. I don't get paid for that, remember? It's a pity. It's so nice to have a little pleasure with your work. Still, I suppose it is better than going back to one of those border saloons. My work is done. When do I get paid? It's not quite done. I, uh, I think that the Prophet of Doom should pay another visit to Lancer to convince the less superstitious of the ranch hands. Just got the wind knocked out. What spooked that crankhorn? Nothing, as far as I could see. Well, they're all spooking. No cars. Like they're on local weed. I've about had it. You know, the bet was right. We're gonna be forever trying to isolate this stuff. Well, it's nature's work. I guess we just have to wait for nature to wipe it out. And meanwhile? Gotta move the herd. I'll offer to buy the Nelson place. But he's asking twice what it's worth. No, but we're in no position to haggle. Angus sold some stock for me. He's bringing the money tomorrow. Evening, man. What can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Lancer, if you don't mind, we'd like our wages. Why? What's the matter? Well, we can't just put our finger on it. We figured we'd be moving on. I see. Sure, I'll get your money. Jelly any better? I wish I could tell you he was. He's sleeping. a dark cloud hovering over the land. A pestilence? Morning, Murdoch. Morning, Johnny. You know that you sign I to process gold tailings up at the mines? Yeah. yeah, they could be reworking some of those old deposits up there. I think you're riding up. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Now, Mr. Lancer, I've been talking to the men all morning about it, but they still got their minds set on quitting. Well, men, this comes at an awfully rough time. I've got this beef that has to be moved. I need each one of you. You don't work at these wages at the risk of getting killed. Your place is jinxed, Mr. Lancer. Have you buried Jelly yet? Ben, I asked if Jelly's dead yet. Of course he ain't dead. Might as well be. The desert's already poisoned. Most of us sick this morning, just like Jelly. I told you it was last night's child that was bad. Sure, Charlie, you got explanations for everything. All right, man, just calm down. Just give us our wages, Mr. Lancer. I intend to. First, I want to talk to you. Now, you know what's happened. I'm going to have to buy other land. I'm going to have to move the cattle there. I need every drover I can lay my hands on. Now, there's a bonus in it for any one of you who stays. You men are too smart to believe any of that superstitious bull. Tell that to Joey. Tell Jelly what? Well, you men are uh, kind of jumping the gun here. Why, I was a plain darn fool to listen to any part of that woman's chatter. 
The doctor put his finger right on it. Turns out the only thing that was wrong with me is a plain old bellyache and a little nervous complications. It was the nerve complications that got me all wrought up. But the pills have made me just about as good as new. Now, you, you men ought to be ashamed for trying to run out on a man like this. Well, dark times fall on all of us. But we got to back him. Now, I want you men to get on back out there on the line and... Johnny. Good try, Jelly. You'll get your wages. Oh, that's all right. Just take it easy. I should have known better than to try. There's nothing you can do about a curse. Jelly, what are you doing out of bed? Now, come on. Thanks, Tom. I was thinking of taking it right up to the mines. You want to go along with me? No, I got a million things to do. Besides, Angus McGovern will be here any second. He can wait, Murdoch. Come on, the ride will do you good. You worried about my health? I'm not worried about anything. I know you're better than that. The doomsday woman get her hooks into you, too? Well, you know, on second thought, I better stick around. You might need me for something. I don't know what you're driving at. The whole ranch is about to go up in smoke. If you got an idea, then follow it through. All right. John. Don't touch me. Wait a minute. Listen, ever since you now came around right here. I'm sorry. I know it's not your fault. I, I know you're telling me just what you saw. I feel like I'm on a runaway horse. I can't stop it and I can't get off. Johnny, maybe there's some logical explanation. What, to turn in the earth for poison? There's one, there's one small chance. Shut down for more than a year now. So what about the mines for the upstream? <laughs> Dead empty. Save for a caretaker or two. Maybe it's a runoff from your own sluices that's poisoned the land. No. No, that. That don't seem possible. None of it's possible. It's all happening now. Sorry, you rode so far for nothing. Sure, I'm chairman of the board, but that does not mean that I run the bank. My motion to sell our joint holdings was vetoed overwhelmingly, and I felt like a fool proposing it. My apologies, Angus. No apologies are necessary. Never rains, but it pours. Murdoch, you don't have to take the licking. Now, don't look at me like a jackal about to pounce on you when you're wounded, but I have offered to buy this spread time and again. And I repeat the offer in writing. Double your asking price, dead cows included. What can be fairer? Angus, I just can't seem to get through to you. I am not interested in saving money. I'm interested in saving this land and this home. And I would see every dollar, every stock and bond, every steer go down before I'd throw in. Maybe I can't understand you because nothing has ever mattered that much to me. I'll tell you one thing, Murdoch. I'm a stubborn man. 
And someday I'm going to buy this land. Probably on the public auction block. I sincerely hope not. Don't forget your offer, Angus. You keep it. Maybe your sons are not as unrealistic as you are. You are a fool, Murdoch. <laughs> for a second. I'd like to ask you a favor. Will you stay with Jelly until Johnny gets back? Oh, yes, of course. Tell Johnny I think there's more to our problem than nature's handiwork. All right, but I don't understand. Are you sure? Yes, quite. So many things happening all at the same time. Maybe you're a part of them, and maybe you're not, but at the moment, you're the only one I can count on. Tell Johnny, when he comes, and I've gone to the South Mesa line shack. South Mesa? Yeah, he'll know where it is. It's a point of elevation from which you can see every square foot of our land. Perfect base of operations for someone. If someone wanted to put us out of business. Mr. Lansom, don't go out there. I have to while it's still daylight. Couldn't you wait until your sons come back? I repeat, I have no choice. How can I explain this to you? I have this dreadful feeling. Another one of your visitations? Please, do not go. Well, let me just say that I'm completely flattered that such an attractive young woman would be so concerned about me. Remember to tell Johnny. I see a dark cloud hovering over the land. But this cloud does not bode well for your house, Mr. Lancer. I see the mask of death again. of a man lying near water, a man who is the head of a house. up some hands. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Murdoch's horse is straggling. You know where we rode off to? Well, but I think I heard him telling Anna Burrell. Uh, go ask her. She's in Teresa's room. No, she's not. That's funny. Could have sworn she said she'd wait for you. Well, maybe she didn't think it was important. Well, maybe she didn't want me to know. When did you last see her? Oh, couldn't have been more than a half hour ago. She could have gone far. Johnny. I wanted to leave, but I couldn't. Where's my doctor? I warned him, Johnny. 
But he wouldn't believe me. Where'd he go? Johnny, they said they only wanted to frighten off Lancer hands. I didn't know they were going to do such ugly things, honestly. Tell me where he went. Oh. South Mesa. Johnny, please don't go. Johnny, don't. You mean I ain't truncated and gonna die? No, Jelly, you ain't gonna die. When you came to my house, I drugged your tea. The rest all happened in your head. Then it was all rigged. Everything was rigged. No. Not all of it. I did see a man lying near water. Headed for the line shack. They must be there now. Jolly! Jolly! I'll get some water. I'm gonna go on to the line shack. You gonna be all right? Yeah. Take care of him. You all right, boss? Yeah, fine. Cyanide's a salt. Put a little on the cattle salt lick, and the cows don't know the difference. Why? Top hand, friend. Put your hands on the box. Why, Charlie? Money. With you gone, too, Scott will give this place away. 
Murdoch isn't dead. It was my job to get him. And you know I do my work well. He's not dead, Charlie. And the girl threw in with us. Oh, 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 not her. She's too smart for that. We're giving her $5,000 for her part. Who's we? Let's go. Johnny, I heard a noise and... Town, have your fortune told? Yeah, just a minute. Oh, I guess I had that one coming, didn't I? Hey, 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 Johnny. Uh, about that uh, flintlock I gave you. Flintlock? Uh, yeah, flintlock. My, my granddaddy's, remember? Oh, yeah, 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 I pawned it. You pawned it? But it was an heirloom. Well, how much did you get for it? Five dollars. Five dollars? But that was priceless. It was mine. Well, yeah, but, well, look, the boss gave me back my old railroad watch. Now, that's the least I could expect from you. Well, I got the pawn ticket. Oh, well, I'll sell it to you for $5. $5? Five that's right. It's priceless, you said. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, what about the pawn ticket? Oh, boy, you smart Alec. Come on, Jelly, the drinks are on me. <laughs> Better be. Mm -hmm. 